with the for example start off the day tour by driving along one of the most beautiful scenic coastal roads in the world in the Antrim Coast Road. This coastal road is recognized as being the top 10 coastal drives in the world and it's going to take us through some of the glens of Antrim. That is basically the start of your day tour. Then for example on top of this you're going to be given the opportunity to cross Carrickareed Rope Bridge. Formative but at the same time to a degree being entertaining. And it will go up but it's a wonderful location tour giving you a wonderful day out in Northern Ireland. But an excellent. But follow it, you can see it even though it's dull, follow it, follow it over to the right hand side to about one o'clock. It's very faint, but you can see a wee mountain out there. Way in the distance. Do you see that? About one o'clock. Very faint, but you can see it. Can you see it? Yes, yes. Right. You see that bit of land out there? Now we're right now up on the north coast. We're looking right into the North Sea. See that bit of land that you can see there? That's Norway. Oh, Norway. Norway. By the way, I'm tired. Now you'll be amazed today. I would expect things keep going the way they are. You'll be amazed how close we're going to get to that. Scotland is only 11 miles away. On a clear day, generally, we can see the whole west coast of Scotland, the whole way up along the east coast of Northern Ireland. Scotland is very, well, it's as simple as this. Northern Ireland is really a mixture of the English, the Scottish, and the Irish. That's what it is. How, how when did this happen? Well, really, it was in the early 1600s. From 1600 to 1640 was a time called the Plantation of Ulster. Ulster's region of Ireland are in today. Basically, Northern Ireland. Over England, Scotland, and Ireland. Now James wanted real influence in Ireland. Now the English had influence in Ireland going back to the 12th century. The introduction of always felt that they had to be an influence because they couldn't have a bit of an influence here. No other part was a place to start. What did they do? They brought across lowland Scottish farmers. And it's quite funny, I always find that quite amusing. Created the religious and the cultural divide that you still see today. It really is as simple as We went there first in a few miles time, I'll name it. There are nine glens, just nine large valleys, but on this road we go through four of them. Now the man who lives in there, it's still a private residence. The man who lives in there is the 12th Earl of Antrim. Mm -hmm. His proper title is the Right Honourable Alexander Randall St. John MacDonald, the 12th Earl of Antrim. And you can sort of well know in this sort of um, And it, it is still a private residence, but it's, I think it's pretty sort of, um, enemy lines during World War Two. They were actually the first person back with it. That is true. Yeah. The little boat house with the plaque for Paddy the Pigeon. For anybody that's looking any money to started to be lost to Scotland. Now once he had done this successfully, that's what he called the Giant's Causeway. It was his bridge, it was Finn McCool's bridge. The storytelling, very important part of Irish culture. So I always think you have to get the legend of Finn McCool in its entirety, but I think the legend is a little bit long. So I've always split it up. You've had part one, you know, we built it since day, but one thing that I was very upset about was that I had hoped, no matter who died, I had hoped that somebody would return to the veil and throw little... 
the crossword. Now let me explain. You go online and you put in there who invented the crossword, it'll bring up this man's name. But it will say there that the crossword was invented in, in England by an Englishman. It's not true. That's not true. The crossword now was invented in England by a man who spent most of his life in England. Uh, he was buried here in the mid 1920s. Wonderful story, fantastic thing. Born, died, Glen Savanter, invented the crossword. Now, as we're passing, uh, there's his headstone right there. Look, you're best looking from the top right hand corner, and I'll point it out to you. So, the event of the crossword, looking from the top right hand corner, he's four <laughs> down and then three across. <laughs> okay, I'm sorry. Uh, some people are still looking. This is the strangest custom of the strangest custom that I have ever heard. Do you want to know why? Why? They're not dead yet. <laughs> They're still alive. What was Jamie Lannister's first job when he took the iron throne? To find a hand. <laughs> what do you call a Dothraki mathematician? Calculator. <laughs> but anyway, here we go. Uh, what we're doing is I'm going to pull up in this bridge and then you're going to walk down here. See across the front of these apartments, past the statue of a goat there, just where the group of people are. You're going to walk down there. King William III. King William was more affectionately known by the Protestant population as King Billy. That's where Hillbilly mm -hmm. comes from. Very, very dull, very dark. I think you need help with things where things are filmed and so on. But where? Who's seen at the end of season yet? I think Kushu Town is a beautiful area. See how close we are to Scotland's thing. Apart from the fact that Game of Thrones are built here, it's a driveway. And this road, the breeze, that led all the way right back. And you can see now how it sort of makes sense why the trees are to this house. That's what the dark hedges actually are. Now, for us, it's the King's Road. 
It's where Aria escaped King's Landing. The footage for the show was actually taken from the other end of the road, looking down here. But for us, for you to go and actually take a photo, and you'll know this if you go back and watch that clip, because the clip only lasts for a few seconds. Uh, but you'll see from here, the dark edges look at their most impressive. Uh, any uh, images that you see of the dark edges online will always be from the top of the road. Um, so yeah, make your way. sitting in the background, always. This bit of coastline is used so much. And I was right, if you look out just slightly to the left, you can see Isla, uh, that's a Scottish island. Very famous for making whiskey. And they do have about 16 distilleries on that island. The Scottish are still trying to get very soon. And I do think down around that area is the finest Game of Thrones place location you can visit. It really is so impressive. Uh, here we're just making our way through the little um, village. Now if you look down the left as well, uh, there was a farmer in this part of the coastline who was absolutely fed up with having his sheep stolen. So to keep his sheep safe, he used to let them graze on that little island. That's how it got its name, Sheep Island. Now how he got the sheep out there if, if you've ever seen that wee game, you can download Angry Birds. <laughs> now down here, the quarry just below us to the left, that's where the filming took place, inside the quarry. And as we get down to the bottom and swing right to our left, you look over to the right hand side, and you can see that that is... And the, the rope bridge is there, you can, it gives you an idea just how far you have to walk. To the right of Ralphin Island, obviously...
and mm. believe me, now we say we here for everything. It doesn't mean small, generally speaking. It's just, I don't know what it is. It's sort of ism of some kind. Uh, but this is a very small shop. I mean, this is uh, named correctly, if you like. Mm. But it's a very small shop, but I like the people who own it. Own it. This village is nothing else. I always felt it needed a shop. They've only had that going on about six months and they sell excellent souvenirs. Not just like the, a lot of places you go to and then, I don't think the souvenirs are very good at times. Uh, but here, there's, I think the souvenirs are excellent, but more than that, they have Game of Thrones merchandise in there. And you you wouldn't believe it. You can find it, it seems to me you can find Game of Thrones merchandise nowhere else. And oh, finish. really not walk back up again that makes it so difficult so um yeah you're just very very fortunate today that uh we could especially after having a lunch you know it's yeah. perfect and it also means that you can spend a bit more time in the harbor itself um yeah so just uh, keep reminding yourself you'd be walking little beach but the little beach is also where those clips of dragon stone are filmed where stalis is quite often sending melisandra away look down there the wee black cliff face, that little beach. Now, only that little bit of that coast. In these clips, and you'd never know that they were the same place, but it's just bizarre. And I mean, look, this is the beauty of this coastline. The surrounded by never see somewhere like this on the Causeway Tour. And I think this is the yeah, nicest it's place. I, I really, and I'm not, obviously I'm not just saying that because it's on the street. I just no. think it's spectacular. I think it's so beautiful around this area. Nice. And there is tight competition whenever you can compare it to places like the bridge, even the coastline that surrounds the causeway. I mean, that's a, there's a stunning coastline everywhere. But I, for me personally, I think this wins. Um, now, and, and, and even more so when it's rough. You know, see whenever it's really bad here, it's so much better. I mean, it's quite rough today, but not like it can be. Now here to the right hand side, we can see the fishermen here. Down in this area, this is where Gendry was set free. This is where Bailon's remains were pushed off that part of the coastline. And that's also where Melisandre, right where those fishermen are on that rock, that's where Melisandre burnt all of the old bannermen of Stannis, who were still worshipping the old gods. And oh, that's where Theon was re-baptised. Right there in front of those two wee bungalows. There. So, I mean, it... There's just, as you can see, there's there are locations everywhere here. And as I say, that we both house in front of us is where Aria.
Okay, so remember you would be walking. That's the important thing to remember. I'm sort of hoping somebody comes out here quickly and sort of gives me the tickets. If they don't, I'll just quickly run in. Um, and then you guys are going to make your way into the center who've got the tickets and just go in there, in through the front doors. I'll point them out and I would go and find out. Uh, just go and use your audio guide. Take the audio guides down there to the causeway, but go back to, go get your audio guide, go out the back of the center and 